Say you took a loan from the bank, and unfortunately, you failed to pay back that loan to the bank. The bank has started selling the property you provided to them as security for the loan they gave you. If this sounds like something you're interested in, please stick around to this YouTube channel because I am going to break down for you the entire process of how the bank will proceed to sell the security you provided f uh, to them, which may be land, car, whatever, house even, how they will uh, conduct the sale, the main obligation, which is for them maintaining and getting their premium back that they lent to you, and then also if you're interested in trying to find alternatives on how to stop the sale so that you can still protect your property in as much as you fail to meet the obligations of the loan. Hello, my name is Nagaev Joan and welcome to the Ask Me About the Law YouTube channel. The Ask Me About the Law YouTube channel is a place where we have free and honest conversations about the law. You can leave us a comment under this YouTube video or you can send us a comment on our social media handles which is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm going to leave the links to those uh, social media handles in the description box of this video. Please endeavor to check them out. You can also find uh, similar content that we have on our other platforms which is uh, blog and also as well as podcast. I'm going to leave the links to those particular avenues in the description box of this video. So earlier on this week, we all woke up to the headline, family loses 30 billion property, bank accused of fraud. In summary, I'm going to break down what the article was talking about. I'm also going to leave linked uh, in the description box of this YouTube channel. I highly encourage you to check it out because you'll find it very interesting. In summary, um, the plaintiff, Awan Ms. Aida Kwesiga, uh, took a loan from housing finance. Now this happened, I think, around March 2012. Unfortunately, despite constant communication, according to the new vision, allegedly Ms. Ida failed to uh, comply with the statutory notices from the bank, uh, encouraging her and advising her and informing her that she has failed to meet and pay the loans back to the bank. So the bank took a step further by um, conducting and proceeding to uh, sell the property so that it can gain back the principal that it lent out in loans to Ms. Ida. Now, Ms. Ida. Uh, this week has filed a suit uh, through her legal counsel to the High Court of Uganda challenging the sale by housing finance to a third party uh, which according to the new vision co was already initiated and uh, it alleged also that it saw uh, the sale agreement between housing finance and the third party and that apparently as soon as 2020 the third party is going to effect the first installment on the first payment for the property that belongs to Miss Ida right now, but because she has failed to meet her loan obligations of paying back the loan she took out from housing finance, uh, housing finance is proceeding to sell the property so that it can secure back the loan that it um, let out to Miss Ida. The particular events in highlighted by that new vision article have triggered a very important long overdue discussion uh, regarding the relationship between a mortgage and a mortgagee. Uh, mortgager is you, the customer that goes to the bank or any other accredited institution asking for a loan and then the, the mortgagee is the bank or any certified financial institution recognized by the laws of Uganda to conduct the business of providing loans. Uh, we need to know that I need us to know that not all financial institutions that give out loans are actually recognized or legally accredited by the Bank of Uganda to provide the loans. For purposes of this uh, YouTube video, I'm going to leave the topic of this discussion specifically to the relationship between a uh, mogeja, mogeji, as in mogeja would be you, the customer, or any customer going to the bank or any accredited institution and seeking a loan. And then, unfortunately, you fail to pay back the loan in a stipulated time. And then the financial institution proceeds to start selling the property. So let's first understand this fancy words thrown around in this entire transaction. So you go to the bank, you you have your land title, you're the legal owner, you go to the bank, you're seeking for a loan, you give your land title a security for them to give you a loan. You're now what would call a mortgager, right? Now, the bank or the financial institution that gives you the loan is the mortgagee or the creditor. Now, the money given to you uh, as the loan that you seek, that money that is given to you is the principal. Now normally the principal comes with something called an interest. The interest is like a percentage of what they will tell you that le let's say we're giving you a space of six months to pay back the money. The first money they give you which you requested for as the loan is, uh, is the principal, right? Now 
on top of the principal, they will give you, they will ask for an interest on that principal. So when you're paying back the principal, you also pay back an interest for having that money. The principal is normally gauged on the, according to the amount of months you will take before you pay back the money. Now, the principal plus the interest in total is what we call the mortgage debt. I, I really hope it's, it was a very clear explanation. So at this point in time, now we've established a working relationship between the mortgager and the mortgagee. And um, this relationship comes with its obligations. For example, we have to respect one another uh, as parties to the contractual agreement, which is between the mortgager and the mortgagee. We have to trust one another and we have to act with due diligence in the process of the transaction and also in the relationship all the transaction. So what do I mean when I say uh, duties and obligations of mortgage and mortgage relationship? Uh, to put it mildly, when you go to the bank as a customer, it's you have a duty to present authentic legal documents to show that you possess or you're the legal owner of the property that, you're that you are providing as security to have the bank give you the loan. If you fail to provide um, legally recognized documents, then the bank cannot give you a loan and they're legally protected to, do, to not give you the loan. And in the same spirit, the bank also is obligated, has a duty to you as the customer in this relationship. So uh, the bank will endeavor to keep you updated, send communication, reminding you that uh, your debt for paying back a percentage as per the contractual agreement between you when they were granting you the loan is say you're supposed to pay back on 14th. They will send you a statutory notice to remind you to make your payments of the loan so each party in this agreement has a duty a responsibility uh, an objective one built on trust respect and uh, mutual confidence on both parties now if you fail to uh, make those payments on time despite the fact that they have endeavored to con maintain constant communication with you uh, and say like hey you know you're supposed to pay back the first installment on the loan on 1st September and you didn't respond positively, you didn't make the payment, then the bank has a right to proceed to carry out what we call the right to sell. Now the right to sell is the bank's way of trying to gain back the principal that they lent you, which you have now failed to pay. Remember the bank is a financial institution, they're in the business of making money, they're not a charity organization. So they will then proceed to sell that uh, security you provided when you are getting the loan, the security would be the land, a car, a house. So they will sell that to make sure they get back the money that they lent you. Whereas the mortgagee, which would be the bank, has the right to sell the mortgage property in order to gain back their security, this right is not absolute. In fact, in the case of Sender Grey Stefan and Nanyombi Gladys, which I'm going to leave uh, a link in the description box of this video, uh, where to lead to the case in detail, the court provided good uh, practical principles that are relevant for the mortgagee to put into consideration when they are practicing their right to sell. So one of the principles emphasized by the court is that the mortgagee must first make sure that they value the property uh, by establishing the current market value of the property and the forced sale market value on the property to ascertain and make sure they get the best price for the property. Now what this means is that um, uh, 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 if I use the current case of Ms. Ida, Ms. Ida is petitioning the court right now on grounds that she's saying that uh, the the bank has not endeavored to evaluate the current market value of the property and has just sold not necessarily getting the best price on the market. So ideally, she said she carried out a uh, property evaluation, an independent property evaluation, which she alleges um, right now the sale that the bank is conducting is uh, is not putting into con consideration the fact that the property that they're selling is of a higher value than what the bank is willing to settle for. So in the case, the court emphasized that if the person that alleges proves to the court that the bank is selling the property at a lesser price than th what the property is valued at, then the person that is alleging, which would be you, is entitled to that difference. So if, say, the property is worth around 20 billion, right? and uh, the bank sells the property at 10 billion. And then you go to court and you prove to court that indeed, hey, these guys are selling my property at 20 billion. I mean, sorry, at 10 billion, the property is valued at 20 billion. You can actually be awarded the difference in that market value, which is a 10 billion. But the essence is that you have to prove that they, the bank is not getting the best price on the market. 
but you need to keep this into consideration the bank is not necessarily you know it's not necessarily written in stone that you ought to do that however it's just a good principle that the court has put into consideration for it to ensure that both you and the bank are all protected in this transaction uh, on that note i feel like i need to address the fact that you know you may go to court saying that the bank sold the property at two, at 10 billion if the property is worth 20 billion but if the court looks into the situation and realizes that in as much as this property is worth 20 billion but right now when the bank wants to conduct the sale there's no one willing to pay that 20 billion the most that the bank could get out of that property is the 10 billion then the bank is and the court will really uh, commend the bank for making that transaction because no one was willing to pay that 20 billion you are alleging the property is worth despite the fact that yes it may be true that on the market value the property is worth 20 billion so remember to have that in mind when you're taking your matter to the court so another principle that the court emphasizes the bank which would be the the mortgagee needs to look into when they're practicing their right to sell is that they have to inform you the mortgage about uh, them conducting the sale so ideally what happens is if the bank will hire someone who's called a receiver, the receiver is just a fancy person who's supposed to help the bank, uh, put the property up on for auction, ev evaluate the property, check the market value and know what the property is worth, then also conduct the bidding process and all those fancy fancy things. So when conducting all these uh, statements above, all these occasions, they have to make sure that they inform you in as much as yes, you you didn't, uh, you know, pay back the loan, but they need to inform you that hey, we we know we're putting up the property, we're evaluating the property, we are now putting up the property for auction. And normally, what most people, what most banks or the receiver does is they put the property up for uh, for sale in newspapers, and then they they call out the they state the date for auction and all that. So what they are doing by putting the sale in newspapers is communicating and presuming that since newspapers are public domain you will actually be able to read the article and know that hey the sale is being conducted so another thing that you need to also know is that once the receiver is hired it is required that the re receiver you know introduces themselves to you they make sure that you know or communicate to you that hey i'm the receiver i've been hired by bank of uganda uh, by sorry by housing finance to do a b c d and sell the property on your own their behalf since you failed to pay back the loan so the third principle that, that the court emphasized should be kept in mind when conducting the right to sell is that uh, there has to be documented proof and evidence of the entire transaction happening. In other words, there has to be a paper trail showing that the bank is communicating to you, even if you may not communicate back or respond positively to the communication. For example, what I mean is they're going to, they ought to be a message uh, from the bank to you saying, hey, you failed to pay the, uh, the debt as of 1st se September, and then again, another communication or a notice of communication saying that, hey, you failed to pay, so now we're putting up properties for auction. Hey, you failed to pay, so now we've taken the properties and we've had the properties evaluated and the properties are worth A, B, C, D. Hey, we've sold the properties to this person. So that is what they mean by evidence or proof. The idea is that um, you ought to be protected, you ought to be informed, and you ought to be kept in the loop of what is happening. Uh, while the bank is carrying out the process just in case you know you finally have the you finally get the opportunity and you raise the money and you can make the payment on the loan so the final principle when the bank has to put into consideration when conducting their right of sale is that they cannot sell the mortgage property under the mortgage act which does not I it doesn't include uh, movable property so what i mean by movable property i think exa examples would make a very good highlight See, if, I, if the security I provided to the bank was a house, and in that house is a garage, and in that garage I have my car, the bank can only sell the house to the third party. They cannot sell my car because my car is movable property, which I can get into the car, drive away. But I cannot get into the house and drive, drive the house away. I hope that makes sense. Uh, another thing I can emphasize is if my security to the bank was a plot of land and then on the plot of land i usually park my car there or i have uh, i park my car there now when the bank sells a property to a third party in as much as yes i defaulted on the loan the bank uh, the the third party cannot then say that th yes they bought the land from the bank that now they're entitled to my car because my car was on the land it does not work like that 
The interesting development in the case of Ms. Ida is that she has petitioned the court through her legal counsel challenging the sale by housing finance on grounds that one, like I established earlier on, she's saying that the property is being sold at a lesser price than the current market value. This has picked a very interesting discussion and I highly encourage you to follow and listen to the next video titled in this series, How to Hold a... Um, uh, which is titled How to Hold a Mortgage Debt Recovery. I really, really implore you to watch it because it's going to give a very good follow-up of this, uh, this week's episode. You are watching the Ask Me About the Law YouTube channel, a place where we have free and honest conversations about the law. And I am your host, Nagaev Jawad. It's a pleasure to have you each and every week watching. If you enjoyed this week's video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you really like the information that you're watching on this YouTube channel, please go up, hit the notification bell on this YouTube channel. Also, you can, leak, you can like this YouTube channel so that um, you are notified every time i release new videos which is every week i always release new videos you can also follow us on social media which is facebook twitter instagram linkedin the handle is at ask me about the law i'm going to leave the links to those social media handles in the description box of this youtube video i also encourage you to check out our blogs and our podcasts which are also available in the description box of this youtube video so please check them out if you have any comments suggestion feedback uh, just i really like hearing uh, from you guys anything Heck, I just want to talk to you guys. You can leave a comment under this YouTube channel, or you can also f uh, say hi to me on social media. On social media, I'm going to leave the links to this YouTube video. I'm also going to leave the links to my socials under this YouTube video in the description box. Highly, I recommend that you check them out.